I would like to um, introduce you to our guest speaker today, Kari Wagner. She began her position over three years ago as Pulamala Na'i's Botany Program Manager and Botanist after completing a master's degree in botany at UH Manoa over there on Oahu. She has been involved in plant conservation work in Hawaii for almost eight years. So mahalo nui Kari for joining us. Um, we really value your partnership um, over here on Maui from MISC and are so happy to see you. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you so much, Serena and Elizabeth. Um, happy to be here today. Uh, Aloha Kako. Thank you for attending this presentation today. So today's talk will focus on Palama Lanai's efforts to eradicate five different invasive plant species on Lanai, including two very, very prickly weeds. Before I dive into the weeds, I want to spend a few moments just talking about the island of Lanai to get everyone on the same page. So Lanai is the sixth largest island in the Hawaiian archipelago, being approximately 90,000 acres in size and has around 3,300 residents. The highest elevation is Lanai Hale at the top of the mountain at roughly 3,380 feet. The island is 98% privately owned by Oracle founder Larry Ellison. Pulama Lanai is basically the management company for the island. The company is composed of over a dozen different departments with one of them being the conservation department. Lastly, over 60% of the island is actively hunted year round for mouflon sheep and axis deer and into, in the winter months, game birds. If you do visit Lanai, it's very important to know where you are on island in regards to the hunting areas. So the botany program, similar to the conservation department as, at Palama Lanai as a whole, focuses on three main project areas. Specifically for the botany program, we protect the native plant species with an emphasis on the federally threatened and endangered taxa. We also do a significant amount of weed control and rare plant and snail exclosures for general watershed protection and to eradicate incipient invasive weed species on island. Additionally, biosecurity falls under the umbrella of the botany program. That program focuses on the prevention of new unwanted introductions to an E, for example, little fire ant, Koki frog and coconut rhinoceros beetle. The botany team includes Jerome Sunio, the biosecurity technician, as well as botanical assistant Alicia Jackwoman and myself. We also work closely with the conservation department's other teams, including the field operations team led by Keely Gela. And as I mentioned earlier, this presentation will focus on the eradication efforts of five weed species on Lanai, but I'm happy to take, pres uh, take questions relating to the other two project areas after the presentation. So just like the other Hawaiian islands, Lanai has its fair share of weeds. Folks have commented sometimes sarcastically on our beautiful fields of fireweed, which on this island is beyond a reasonable ability to eradicate due to the widespread distribution and abundance of the species on Lanai. But in the past several years, we have focused on the eradication of less widespread species, including cat's claw, Cherokee rose, Parthenium, fountain grass, and ivy gourd. Several of these species are target species by the Maui Invasive Species Committee who have spent a significant time battling these weeds on Maui and historically Lanai. And now we at Palama are trying to finish these projects. With the addition of, the, of Alicia to the botany team this past fall, it allowed us to most recently start control of Cat's Claw and Cherokee Rose. One final note, because this is HISM and not Hawaii Invasive Plant Awareness Month, I wanted to point out that Lanai does not have any established populations or individuals that we know of of koki frog, little fire ant, or coconut rhinoceros beetle. We put a lot of time and effort at Palumbo Lanai into routine monitoring and treating of incoming shipments for these pests in order to avoid the repercussions of having an established population of any one of these pests on Lanai. So the first of the five weeds I wanted to highlight is cat's claw, which is a pretty nasty prickly climbing shrub in the bean family. We know from this data that it was first documented on Lanai in 2005 by that agency. It was found in Kapano Gulch and currently that's the only area where we know of it on Lanai. Kapano Gulch is located just outside of Lanai city near the southern edge of the town. Cat's claw has these really botanically amazing and plentiful recurved prickles on its branches that can cause people and animals to get easily entangled in the shrub. 
A couple of years ago, I met a Lenape resident named Kathy Brindo, who has made it her life's goal recently to eradicate cat's claw from Capano Gulch. Over the past six years, she has basically eliminated cat's claw from two of the four known locations in the gulch. I, I promised Kathy a couple years ago that we at Flama would eventually join in her eradication efforts. And it, it's been really nice two years, two years later um, to follow through on that promise. And as of this month, we have killed all of the known immature and mature individuals. So we're just pulling seedlings at this point. Um, Capano Gulch is a designated hunting area for bow hunters. So we hope our eradication efforts will benefit the hunting community on Lenape as well. And the numbers that I present in this slide are just the numbers that we know of of plants that we controlled. I have no idea how many plants that Kathy's controlled over the past few years. And just to highlight the, the kind of nastiness of this species, um, we're just really happy to nip this in the bud before it's gotten really out of control in this gulch. We, we know from history that it, it can get really pretty crazy. Um, and we've used, you know, <laughs> chainsaws to help with this eradication effort. And it really helps to have a positive team of people to work with when doing this type of control work. So we found that using the cut stump method followed by treating the cambium layer of the trunk with 50% garland for and crop oil to be effective at killing the immature and mature plants. And then we hand pull the seedlings. We also did one round of foliar spray application at a rate of 0.5% garland for this herbicide method solely defoliates the branches and especially helpful for getting to the trunks of some of the individuals that have climbed 20 plus feet into the air um, on the surrounding vegetation. So Cherokee Rose is another new target weed for us that we really started tackling in October of 2020. Similar to Cat's Claw, it's a very prickly climbing shrub. It was first documented on Lenape Hale, so at the top of the mountain in 1938. It currently covers about three and a half acres or about 250 meter stretch of both sides of Monroe Trail at that location. It's a concern for both the endangered Oahu or Hawaiian petrel that nests in the Hale from March to December, as well as a reef threat to the native vegetation, including rare species like Malakote Monroei that are found in that area. This fall, it really just got to the point where we at the <laughs> Everybody at the con in, within the conservation department said, you know, we, we really need to tackle this. And so as of October, we've cleared about 85 meters of that 250 meter stretch or about one acre. And in the process, we've learned a lot about this species and are still learning more about Cherokee Rose. Um, it can be very hard to kill with herbicide like a Garland 4 um, solution if it has roots that are buried really deep in the soil and the Luhe. Um, we so far we've put all of the pieces that we've cut or lopped into one giant pile rather than a bunch of smaller piles because it has a tendency to regrow from fragmentation. Um, it's just it's incredibly um, you think a, a fragment you know of the Cherokee rose stem is dead and then it there's one healthy node on that stem still left and it will just you know reroute from that one small segment. Um, so that's why I mentioned it has seems to have more lives than a cat. Um, keeping everything contained in one pile definitely makes it a lot easier to monitor for any of that regrowth. And it will also send its roots out, out everywhere, um, including up and down a, a tall tree. And it occasionally provides habitats for Lenape's native snails. So we just have to be extra cautious uh, when we're moving in between the, when we're controlling this species on the hall. So the next three weeds I'll be presenting on are all weeds that we've been working to eradicate for several years now. Parthenium, also called Santa Maria, is a short-lived but very prolific seeding aster. It's poisonous to livestock if ingested and in high quantities can cause asthmatic reactions to humans as well as other health problems. It was first documented on Lenae by Hank Oppenheimer, the Maui Ui Pep coordinator in 2015 near the Koeli stables located just outside of Lenae City. So on the opposite side of town as the Cat's Claw in Capano Gulch. So far, this is the only known location for the species on island. The plant can go from seedling to mature plant with seed set within a matter of a few weeks. Um, so, we, so we survey for this weed every two weeks to keep on top of it. Um, so from 2015 to 2017, the field operations crew would periodically monitor the area of the infestation and handful individuals 
Starting in 2018, we really took a more systematic approach for this species with the goal of eradication. Survey intervals decreased at one point in 2018 from two weeks to one week um, until we really feel it, felt like we got a handle on the species in the area that we needed to survey. And so I'm really happy to report that this is the same figure from the Hawaii Conservation Conference uh, that I, when I presented there this past summer, because we haven't found any more plants since mid-July, mid so just over six months, which is really exciting. And I realized I missed, um, I don't have a bar for 2021, but it would just be a blank space. Um, and so weedy asters are generally very difficult to eradicate due to the amount of seeds that pro they produce. Parthenium is no exception. Uh, the short time to maturation and the ability to disperse those seeds really easily. So I'm hopeful that this project will end sooner than later. Moving on to our efforts for, for controlling fountain grass, which is a very invasive fire adapted grass species. It was originally brought to Hawaii and Lanai, I believe, as an ornamental grass. Historically, there were several locations of this species on island. Due to changes in land management and through the work of the Maui Invasive Species Committee, we know of only two sites where fountain grass is still found. Both sites are located in the cooperative game management area, which is approximately 30,000 acres of land that DLNR DOFA manages. The figure in this slide shows our control efforts for the species over the course of the past two years, once we really had a better handle on where the fountain grass currently remains. We are really happy to report this downward trend that you see in the figure. Um, we survey for fountain grass every three to four weeks because similar to parthenium, it can set seed pretty quickly if the conditions are, are correct. So the last species that we're working towards island-wide eradication is ivy gourd. It's a viney plant in the squash family and luckily it doesn't have any prickles, spines, or thorns. A single plant can grow to two or three stories tall and engulfs surrounding vegetation, structures, power lines, Etc. if left uncontrolled. It was eradicated by MISC from Kamalapau Harbor on the west side of the island several years ago, I believe in the early 2000s, but has continued to be prevalent at the only other known location on island, which is in and around the Manelli Four Seasons Resort on the south side of the island. We are definitely winning the war on the species, and for two years, up to this past December, we hadn't found a single fruiting individual. Uh, unfortunately, we did find one fruiting individual this past December, well hidden amongst some oleander trees. Uh, it was actually first spotted by a really amazing property manager and one of the properties at Manelli. Um, so big shout out to all of the folks that assist us with this kind of weed control effort at Manelli. Um, we were able to collect hopefully all of the fruit minus a few seeds from, from one of the individuals. Um, but that means that project timeline for completing the project um, in that area at Manelli is, is set back by a bit. Um, but because ivy gourd has male and female plants with only the female plants forming fruit, we knew that there must be a male plant nearby, um, which was also frustrating because not only did we miss a female plant, we missed a male plant. Um, but what was really great is we did find that male plant too across the ravine. It was hidden in some Kiave trees, but we got that one. And I just wanted to, point out, you know, we, there's often setbacks or frustrating moments in, you know, weed control, um, whatever, wherever you do weed control. And I, I often think about, you know, this scene from Jurassic Park with Jeff Goldblum, where he says, life finds a way, you know, and it's not, a, in a sense, to me, a comic relief, but a reality check is that we're working against the natural progression of these weeds. And not, I don't want to, humanize weeds because they, they definitely don't deserve that. But, um, you know, we just, we try to do our best and, you know, we learn from our mistakes and we try not to repeat them. But, um, but it was frustrating to find the female plant, but we're really happy we found that male plant, knowing that um, there was such amazing fruit set in that female plant that a male plant had to be in the vicinity. So that concludes the presentation of our weed eradication efforts on Lanai. Um, just one final note regarding invasive species in Hawaii. Uh, it's up to really, you know, all of us to protect the aina. Uh, every island is unique regarding its native and non-native assemblage of plants and animals and other life forms. The two most important things, you know, anyone can do in Hawaii for the protection and conservation of the island's natural resources is to clean footwear and gear 
when you're moving um, between sites within an island, you know, and obviously when you're moving between different islands, and if you see something or say or hear something, please say something, you know, especially about any of the pests or you know plants that were mentioned in this in this presentation. Uh, you can always call six four three pest. I know Beth Speeds is on, is um, a part of this presentation today, so you can always call that hotline to report a pest from any island. You know, if you're on. Lynette, you can always shoot me an email or you can contact one of uh, our wonderful co-directors at the Conservation Department, um, John or Rachel Sprague at 563-3179. Um, and we, we report to, we, we um, you know, even at 7 p.m. on a Friday night, we're, we're, we're out there if there's um, a pet that's been reported. And with that, I just wanted to give a big mahalo, uh, especially to the folks at Palama and, um, you know, Team Botany with uh, Jerome and Alicia, and then a big shout out to all of our supporting and partner organizations that help in our efforts to document, survey, and eradicate reeds on Lena E with an extra big shout out to NISC. And with that, I'll take any questions. Mahalo Nui Kari for that awesome presentation. Um, I just because we have a little lag on Facebook Live, I want to invite our Facebook Live watchers. If they have any questions, please put it in the comments. Um, and then I will let Beth take on the Zoom comments and questions. We've got some good ones in there. Sure. Um, so you do, you have, here's the first question that I'm seeing right now from Randy Bartlett. Um, do you, well, what is the per coverage percentage of each of your target species compared to the entire 90,000 acres, 140 square miles um, of the island? So I have some notes written down. So the fountain grass is tricky because I think one, one of the areas that I hike for the fountain grass is about, it's like two and a half miles there and back to cover that area. So for the fountain grass, I'm not sure about. For the other species, I can I can give rough estimates on. Um, so for like the, let's see, starting with the Cherokee rose. So that's about three and a half acres. The cat's claw is like one to two acres. It's really was probably like a mostly like a one acre infestate infestation that we've been tackling. And then for the Parthenium, it's about six acres. And let's see, for ivy gourd, oh gosh, that's that's like all of four seasons and beyond property. So it it's huge. It's like, I mean, we log like 20 miles on a golf cart and then plus walking. So <laughs> uh, I would have to get back, um, but it's, it's a significant area. So of the south side of the island. Um, but if you want more specific acreage, I, I can get back to you, Randy. That sounds good. <laughs> wow, you guys are doing such amazing work over there. Um, and I want to, does anybody else have any other comments or questions? Um, I only am seeing comments right now and they're all complimentary, but if anybody, I, I have a question. Do you, sure. and if this is beyond the scope of what you do, just tell me, but do you have a feel for um, plants that you see, plant pests that you see coming in in those areas that you're assisting with the quarantine or looking for other pests coming in to Lanai? Do you mean, it, do we have an area that we station the plant? Oh, no, I, I guess I was kind of wondering for those folks that are participating from outside of Lanai, are there, are there pe um, plant pests that we should be really careful that we're not giving to you guys? I guess that's a better way to ask it. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we screen for all sorts of pests. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the three that I mentioned are big ones, but um, in particular, we've been kind of battling with an ongoing small infestation of hollow scale at Manelli. So that's one big one. Um, we've had shipments come in with like the cycad scale. So we just always watch for that. Um, what else? I, I would, I'm thinking about what would Jerome say right now? Um, but, and then also uh, we do have a little, we have a, I, what appears to be a localized 
population of Yucca and Dina, so the rosy wolf snail in town, but we definitely don't want it to migrate up to the Halle. So we do pay particular attention to, um, to any shipments that have rosy wolf snails, whether they're alive or just the shell. So I guess those are some of the, the ones we look out for. Um, and then you had so a comment from John Sprague too about Niothrip um, being one that you guys- yes. Yes, thank you, John. Yes, that is definitely one that we do not want. We have thousands, if not tens of thousands of really healthy NIO on Lanai, and it would just be devastating to our NIO population, obviously, if we got that here. So that's a big one. And we've been, it's been really nice this past year in 2020, we started partnering with um, the Maui Nui Botanical Gardens. And so we've been sending NIO those seeds to them and trying to really be proactive in the event that Nile thrip does come here. We have a, a nice seed reservoir um, on Maui. So thank you <laughs> to those folks at Maui New Botanical Gardens. We're just getting some mahalos um, to you, Kari, um, on Facebook and in our chat here. Um, and just want to mahalo you as well and your whole team for just being so amazing and proactive in taking care of the Aina over there in Lanai um, and for your screening program and just all the work that you do. When I called Kari to talk a little bit about this program, she was actually in the field like, hey, hold on, I'm like scrambling down a cliffside right now. Let me call you back. And so um, you know, just thank you for all of the work that you do in protecting Lanai um, and partnering also with being so open to partner with all of us organizations over here as well. Um, and we just appreciate, you know, all that work that you do.